Welcome to part 4 of the third week. In the previous part, I have derived the cable equation. And I said that depending on what type of ion channels you put into the equations, you can get different behaviors. In the following, I would like to focus on the case of a passive dendrite. A passive dendrite means that I only have a ohmic current a current that corresponds to Ohm's law, a current that does not give rise to action potentials. That would be an active current, the currents that we have in the SOMA or in the hodgkin huxley model. So let's look on this passive dendrite and let's derive the cable equation for the case of a passive dendrite now. So up here we have the equation that I derived in part two. This is the cable equation, the cable equation for arbitrary choices of ion current. But now let's focus on a passive dendrite. Remember that the little i is a specific current per unit length of cable. Now Ohm's law is that these ion currents can be described by a linear relation between the voltage at location X and the membrane resistance and the little r indicates that again this is something per unit length. So let's plug this in here. So I insert U so I have RL and then I have U of T and X divided by the little r m, the membrane resistance. I copy the other terms, minus RL I external. I have a little RL DDT U of T and X, and these different terms give the right-hand side of the equation. On the left-hand side, I have the second derivative of the voltage with respect to the spatial coordinate X. So let's now multiply this equation by Rm. So I move this term to the other side. Rm d square dx square u of t x c r m d d t u of t x plus u of t x minus r m i external and you may have wondered what happened to this r l well let's divide by r l at the same time so I have here RL, the longitudinal resistance. It has disappeared here, it has disappeared here, it has disappeared here. Now let's introduce some shorthand notation. C times RM, I call this tau. This term here, RM over RL, I call lambda squared. This gives me the final equation, lambda squared, second derivative with respect to space of the voltage tau, little m, first derivative of the voltage with respect to time, plus u of tx, im, i external of t and x. This equation here is the cable equation for the passive dendrite or the passive cable equation. U is units of voltage. R times I is unit of voltage. This is the derivative with respect to time. Therefore, tau m or tau m is a time constant. 
This is the second derivative with respect to space of the voltage. The right-hand side has units of voltage. Therefore, this lambda squared has units of space squared. It's a length. Lambda is a length. Lambda squared is the length squared. So now we have a partial differential equation, a differential equation with two different derivatives, one with respect to space, one with respect to time, a partial differential equation as before, but it's now completely linear. This is linear in the voltage, this is linear in the voltage, this is linear in the voltage. And for these kind of linear differential equations, it's possible to find solutions analytically. So let's consider the following paradigm. We inject a current pulse, a very short current pulse, very short. So we inject a current pulse at time t at location x minus x0. Now this current pulse will put a lot of charge at this location. The charge will spread out in both directions. The charge will also leave the dendrite through ion channels. As a result, the, the peak that was at location 1, this is where I injected the current, this peak becomes broader and broader. Initially it's sharp, then it becomes broader and broader and because of these transversal currents, the surface under the peak will also decrease over time. For this solution of this differential equation, the dendrite was approximated just as one linear cable, which is very long in this direction. Its formal is infinitely long. But on the soma, at the soma, it's closed. This would be where action potentials are generated. Here we are interested just in the dendritic stimulation. Therefore, we just close it here. So a pulse injected here will give rise to a very sharp peak at the beginning. But then it will decrease and disappear over time. We can follow the effect of the current injection here, not just at this location, but also at many other locations. For example, we can follow it at the soma. So what you see at the beginning, the voltage was very low. Then the voltage increases. This would be the second curve. This is the third curve. The voltage increases, and then it decreases again. Therefore, as a function of time, the voltage first increases and then decreases again. So this is for dendritic stimulation. We stimulate at location 1 and we measure the time course at the soma. If we stimulate further out in the dendrite, if we give a stimulated stimulation here, further out in the cable, then the total effect at the soma is much less. If we stimulate close to the soma, then there's an initial sharp rise and a sharp peak measured at the soma. To summarize, the cable equation allows us to understand how charge that arrives through synapses or through current injection on the dendrite, how charge spreads out over the dendrite and how it gives rise to a postsynaptic potential, how it gives rise to a time course, how it gives rise to a potential at the soma. With this, I would like to close this part and please take a couple of minutes for the quiz before we go on to the final part of this week, where we discuss modern neuron models with dendrites.